Hello everyone, this is Seher from Dentavest. Today we are going to do microbiology review. So we can see the table of contents starting with general microbiology. We'll discuss about the infections, bacteriology, bacterial vaccines, virology, antiviral drugs, mycology, and parasitology. So here we can see the difference between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cells. We know the prokaryotic cells like bacteria, uh, they do not have any membrane-bound organelles or no membrane-bound envelope, but they do have their genetic material condensed in the center of the cell that is called as nucleoid. While eukaryotes have the membrane-bound organelles, a proper nucleus, ribosome is 80S here, while the ribosome in the prokaryotes is just 70S. Now we can see a comparative table between viruses, bacteria, fungi, and the parasite. So bacteria are the prokaryotic, they have a cell wall of peptidoglycan having both RNA and DNA, while the viruses has the protein capsid, uh, nucleocapsid, nucleic acid and the protein capsid, and some of the viruses have envelopes surrounding them. Viruses always have either RNA or DNA, never both of them together. Fungi, parasites, plant cell, animal cell, they are all eukaryotic. We'll discuss more details of them in the coming pages. On this slide, we can see the details about uh, the Streptococcus bacteria and the Staphylococcus. We know they are very, very important bacteria as we have. So alpha hemolytic streptococcus, streptococcus pneumoniae, it causes meningitis and pneumonia in middle aged and elderly. Also, it's the most common bacteria causes sinusitis and the middle aged infection in the children. Streptococcus mutans, we know it causes caries, while streptococcus pyogenes is a very important bacteria that has the M protein, streptokinase, arthrogenic toxin, streptolysine as the virulence factor and it causes many diseases like uh, pharyngitis, cellulitis, impetigo, scarlet fever, rheumatic fever. Now when we talk about the Staphylococci, as we know Staph aureus is the most important bacteria which is coagulase positive and has different virulence factor like protein A, beta lactamase, enterotoxin, uh, toxic shock syndrome toxin that causes toxic shock syndrome, exfoliating which causes scalded skin syndrome, uh, Staphylokinase and one of the species of uh, Staph aureus called as MRSA, methicillin resistant Staph aureus which is hospital acquired infection very deadly. Staph aureus is also implicated in causing endocarditis and most common bacteria causing osteomyelitis. We have another Staphylococcus species called as Staph epididymis that is causing infection of IV catheters and the prosthetic devices. Now we can see different type of gram-negative bacilli which could be enteric, respiratory or the zoonotic. So the important one which are enteric that is associated with the GIT is the E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, Vibrio cholera, C. jejuni, Klebsiella and H. pylori. So E. coli as we know it's a very very important gram-negative bacilli that causes uh, most common bacteria causing UTI traveler diarrhea and neonatal meningitis, while salmonella we know causes typhoid fever, uh, enterocolitis and important it can cause osteomyelitis and septicemia in the sickle cell anemia patient. Shigella causes bloody diarrhea, vibrio cholera causes watery diarrhea, we can see more details and pictures of them. While Campylobacter jejuni, it is a comma shaped bacteria, while H. pylori, we know it's associated with stomach cancer and causing gastritis and the peptic ulcer. While the Klebsiella pneumoniae is associated with pneumonia in alcoholic or diabetes and also hospital acquired UTI is caused by Klebsiella pneumoniae. Okay, so on this page we can see a uh, different type of protozoal infections. Uh, that are associated with humans. We know entamoeba histolytica is important, causes amoebiosis or amoebic dysentery causing flash shaped liver abscesses. And the larva form of entamoeba histolytica is a motile trophozoite, treatment is mebendazole. Another one we have is Giardia lambia, that's the most common cause of diarrhea in the United States, also called as a backpacker diarrhea. Transmission of both of them is fecal oral. Cryptosporidium parvum, it causes diarrhea in the AIDS patient, while trichomonas vaginalis mean cause trichomoniasis, that's STD. Now, plasmodium is also very important protozoa. We know it has different species like Vivax, Ovale, Malaria, Falciparum, causing malaria. Plasmodium falciparum is the most fatal form of plasmodium, causing cerebral malaria. 
malaria with the symptoms of fever, headache, splenomegaly, anemia, and sporozoites and merozoite forms of the parasite. So merozoite form and hypnozoite form are found in the liver. Hypnozoite will cause the relapse of the malaria. We know the medications like mefloquine, primaquine. Then we have the T gondii or toxoplasma gondii. We know that this parasite is mainly transmitted through cat feces and it will cause severe infection in immunocompromised patient causing encephalitis, seizures and also can be transmitted from mother to baby and baby can be born with toxoplasmosis having blindness or mental retardation. Treatment is sulfadiazine. Now pneumocystis carna we know it causes pneumonia in the AIDS patient immunosuppressed. Now some of the helminths that are associated with human infection like your tinea solium that's a poke tape form, tinea saginata is a beef tape form and the name of the larva is cysticercus. So tinea solium can be more deadly if the larva get collected in the brain like neurocysticercosis. Treatment is prezequentil and albendazole for these matozoas or worms. Tinea saginata doesn't cause cysticercosis though. Entrobius vermiculares is the most common worm infection in the United States that will be itching in the perianal area. While trichinella spiralis is associated with the muscle periorbital edema, fever and the larva is growing in the striated muscle so there will be muscle pain. Ingestion of undercooked meat, pork, wild game of hunting can lead to trichinella spiralis infection. Uh, now we can see uh, some more points about the gram-negative bacilli. As we know, Pseudomonas aeruginosa that produces a blue-green pigment in the culture. And this is the most common bacteria causing pneumonia in the cystic fibrosis patient or the burn infection, swimmer airs, and very important causing osteomyelitis in the diabetic patient. We also have the hemophilus species like uh, influenzae or aegypticus. We know hemophilus influenzae causing epiglottitis, while aegypticus causing pink eye or acute conjunctivitis, also called as a coach weak uh, bacillus, while neogelena causes pneumonia due to air conditioning and pneumonia in the older and smoker, while bodytella portus species causing the whooping cough. Now, some of the bacilli which are transmitted by animals like brucellosis, undulant fever transmitted by dairy, while francillera tularensis causes tularemia, Yersinia pestis, we know it's very important. It's causing plague that is transmitted by fleas and rodents. It has F1, V and W antigens. While pastorella miltosida, it causes cellulitis due to cat or dog bite. Now when we talk about the mycobacteria, we know mycobacteria takes only the acid fast staining. The typical feature of mycobacteria is that its cell wall has mycolic acid waxy coating in it that will prevent the penetration of gram chemicals. So it only take the acid fast staining, carbol fusion, where it's going to stain red against the blue background. Now you can also see a comparative table between mycoplasma tuberculosis and mycoplasma pneumonia. So mycoplasma tuberculosis, it carries the cot factor and we already know the treatment of it, multiple drug therapy like rifampine, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethionamide and the testing of it is PPD skin testing, sputum testing. We already discussed about it in pathology and the stages of primary and the secondary tuberculosis. While mycobacterium leprae causing leprosy, it is of two form tuberculite type and the lepromatous type having the foam cell. Now we know the chlamydia is the most common cause of STD in the United States. It causes trachoma, inclusion conjunctivitis, blindness and the STD. So chlamydia is the most common cause of preventable blindness that can be contracted in swimming pool. Now mycoplasma pneumonia, as we know it's the smallest bacteria, it causes atypical walking pneumonia in the young adult. It doesn't have cell wall but the cell membrane has the cholesterol in it. Now we can see some of the rickettsia species like rickettsia rickettsia or provizeki. Rickettsia causes rocky mountain spotted fever while rickettsia provizeki causes epidemic typhus. Both the rickettsia species are going to give a positive wheel phallic reaction. Coxella burnetii, it causes Q fever, a mild kind of pneumonia. Triponema palladium, we already know it's a syphilis bacteria. We discussed in oral pathology, the primary, secondary and the tertiary stages of syphilis. Triponema bacteria is visualized by dark field microscopy and we also should know the features of the congenital syphilis.
Now, Borrelia burgdorferi, we know it's a very, very important condition. It causes the Lyme disease. We can see the stages of the Lyme disease. Stage 1 is asthma migraine, stage 2 is neuropathy, and stage 3 is arthritis and the CNS disease. Now, Borrelia burgdorferi is visualized using aniline dye, right, or gene sustain with light microscopy, and transmission is by ticks. Mostly, Borrelia is more endemic in states of Connecticut, New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. Now we start with the viruses or the virology. So we know virus is just made up of two components, the nucleic acid and the capsid protein coat. So virion, infectious complete virus particle is called as a virion. As we know, viruses never have both DNA and RNA. So they are either DNA viruses or the RNA virus. Now this capsid is going to be antigenic that provoke host immune response. And the viruses which does not have the envelope it will serve as an attachment protein. Some of the viruses that develop envelope around them if they are coming out of the host cell by budding. Viruses, we know they are completely obligate intracellular. They need the host cell for their multiplication because they are lacking the basic host, uh, basic cell machinery. So they cannot multiply on their own. They are very minute and they can be seen only by light microscopy. Now you can see here in the viral growth curve, so you have the latent phase starting from the viral penetration until viral release. Then you have the eclipse phase. Eclipse phase is a phase in which virus is not detected in the blood. So this is the phase from the viral penetration until the virus get assembled within the host cell. And the final phase will be the rise phase that is from assembly until the viral releases in the blood. So you can see the viral growth cycle also here, like starting with the attachment, then it penetrates inside the host cell, then uncoating where it will leave the capsid protein gate out and the nucleic acid or virus will attach to the host. So once it is inside the host cell, it is undergoing the transcription and the translation. We know transcription is DNA making mRNA and translation is RNA making the protein. Finally, it will get assembled. We can see it is making, doing early translation making early protein and late translation making late proteins. So early translation proteins are mainly the DNA polymerase and late translation protein are the capsid protein. So once the virus has the late mRNA, LD mRNA, early protein, late protein, then it is going to assemble. And finally the virus or virion particle will be released out and there's a breakdown of the virus infected cell. Now we can see here, This is a table of comparison of the major hepatitis virus, Hep A, B, C, D, and E. So we know the hepatitis viruses, uh, H, hepatitis A is uh, the mildest kind of hepatitis. And hepatitis B, so what is uh, the serological profile is also important. For example, in immunity, you will develop antibody to HBS, while in acute infection, you have IgM antibody for anti-HBC. So there are mainly three antigen in uh, hepatitis B virus, surface, core, and the extra antigen. So you should know the serology that in the acute infection, then uh, months after exposure, what are the different changes and what are different profiles that you see. Like in incubation period, we have HBSAG, prodrome acute disease, we have HBSAG and secondary rise of antibody to HBC. In the convalescence phase, the early phase, we have antibody to HBC and the late phase, we have antibody to HBS. Serological profile is very, very important. Now, we know the Hep C has more chance of chronicity as compared to Hep B because we do not have any active vaccine against Hep C. Hep D infection is only a super infection over Hep B because Hep D virus require antigen, surface antigen of HBV to get the infection done. Now, Hep E virus is... Uh, virus that will cause mainly the infections in the pregnant females of underdeveloped countries like African countries. So thousands of pregnant females are dying due to HEV. So HEV, HAV due to contaminated food or water, fecoral, while B, C and D is mainly through the uh, percutaneous or exposures or the blood-borne infections. Now we come to the study of fungi. So fungi are mycology. 
So it's a gram, we know fungi are gram positive eukaryotic microorganisms. They are either obligate or facultative aerobes. And they have a cell membrane that has ergosterol in it and the cell wall which has a spatial protein chitin in it. Their capsule is made up of polysaccharide. Now the fungal reproduction can happen with the sexual and asexual spore. In the asexual spore, chlamydospore are very important which are rounded, thick wall and highly resistant spores. Now you can get fungal infection by three ways. By inhaling the spores of the fungus that will create an allergic type and hypersensitivity reaction or you can ingest the fungus in contaminated food or water that will create type 4 delayed hypersensitivity reaction forming a granuloma in different organs of the body that's kind of a cell mediated immune response or you can get toxicity from ingesting the fungal toxins now you can see here different types of fungal infections and definitely uh, the histoplasma capsulatum and coccidoids imitis is a very important systemic fungus but before that, we can see some of the opportunistic infections that are being given here uh, and the skin fungal infections. Skin fungal infections are called as a dermatophytosis like trichophyton, epidermophyton and microsporum. They are the cutaneous fungal infections and the ringworm infection as we know it's very important tinea corporis we also have tinea capitis cruris pidis and griseofulvin is the main drug for treatment of the tinea infection a different type of opportunistic infection that we can have from the fungus definitely candida is number one it's a very important condition we should know everything about candidiasis then we have cryptococcus that causes meningitis in the aids patient we have aspergillus fumigators that causes a fungal ball condition and the mucor that is very important causing rhinocerebral mucormycosis especially in uncontrolled diabetic patient that leads to paranasal sinus and the brain infection Hi my dear student who are preparing for IMDD ADAT a part 2 exam. Uh, thanks so much for watching this review video of the subject. If you really liked it, please buy the full version by clicking on the link given in the description. With the purchase of every video, you will be getting free live assessment and evaluations on the subject as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Dentabest channel now to get the latest updates on the smart videos. If you have any questions, please comment me in the box below. I, Dr. Seher from Dentavest, wishes you all the best for exam and thanks again for watching.